The Ministry of Finance and the Public Service presents Let's Talk Finance, a feature exploring the various elements of the economic program. Welcome again to Let's Talk Finance here on Nationwide 90 FM. My name is George Davis. We're talking matters concerning the Financial Investigations Division, the FID, and I have two guests with me. Among them, Chief Technical Director Robin Sykes of the FID and Gary Dixon. He is from the UK, but he's a consultant to the FID. I said among them because the third person, which should have been three guests, will remain nameless. She's always here in the background doing the promotional work for the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service. Gentlemen, we want to talk about the FID and the training that it's doing, training up new financial investigators and trading up people in the processes that are relevant to that uh, specific area. Mr. Sykes, may I start with you? Uh, what is the FID embarking on at this time? All right. Um, thank you, George. The FID is embarking on a program of training financial investigators to make the use of financial investigations a more mainstream activity within different law enforcement spheres. So as you know, financial investigations include essentially looking into financial affairs that touch on and relate to criminal conduct with the goal to identify and document the movement of money relating to such conduct. And we are of the view that financial investigations must be the cornerstone of any investigation relating to major proceeds generating crimes. If I were to rank Jamaica on a continuum from 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, 1 being the lowest, where would you put the quality of the hu- of the professionals involved in financial investigations in Jamaica? Would they be 5 or would they be in the lower bracket or are they trending towards 10? Well, I can actually tell you that, that internationally we are rated as... Um, been substantially effective, and this is a rating carried out by the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force. Mm -hmm. We are rated as substantially effective in one of the key areas of financial investigations, which is confiscation. So we have recognized experts in the jurisdiction, but what we're trying to do is to spread that expertise away from the center into wider law enforcement. So moving into areas of customs, moving into areas of the JCF, So we don't want to have a centralized, overworked um, core of experts Mm -hmm. doing all financial investigations. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make it more mainstream. Mm -hmm. And this is is the the basis of this course. Uh, Gary, you, you bring the international perspective. Not to say it didn't exist before you, but you have a, a, a particular task. In terms of your own mandate, where this business of improving and enhancing the financial investigative capabilities of the professionals working in Jamaica. What is that mandate? Um, The mandate, George, is underpinned by um, the UK Department for International Development's commitment to Jamaica. Um, And part of that is in relation to enhancing the capacity and capability of investigators generally in relation to financial investigation. I've been in Jamaica a number of years, um, and I would say, without um, fear of contradiction, the investigators here in Jamaica that we have involved currently in financial investigation at the centre rank alongside anywhere that I've ever worked Mm. or seen. No no issue with that at all. As Robin has said, the the plan going forward is to widen um, the sphere of persons who can conduct um, financial investigations and apply it to more of the crimes that we see here in Jamaica. Yeah. Robin, I, I, I continue to, well, I'm baffled when I read in the international press, uh, well, I can, I can tell you one, around about the time of the financial crisis, the global financial crisis, there was this big story about the, uh, a rogue trader, I think he was from Sotgen in, Fra- in, in France, Jerome Creville, and the billions that he <laughs> helped himself to, let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. And then there have been several individuals like him who've perpetrated massive financial frauds at some of the blue chip uh, banking institutions in the world. And I wondered, well, what are these guys doing where financial investigations are concerned and being able to nip in the bud some of these huge mm-hmm. frauds? And then it led me to wonder, if it is that sophisticated organizations such as these are victims of financial fraud, what then about what then the status of, of, of such nefarious activity within organizations in countries such as Jamaica? Mm-hmm. 
is the level of fraud perpetrated in the big countries an indicator that countries such as Jamaica are still developing with our systems not nearly as old and as rigorous as those? Are we not seeing the true picture? Is there fraud being perpetrated that we and our systems aren't able to detect is the question? I would say that the levels of fraud in Jamaica are relatively proportionate to those in, in large countries. There is, I think, an acknowledged view that um, given our crime situation, white-collar crime is perhaps not um, the top um, agenda item. Mm -hmm. However, in our view, that, that's quite misguided because, firstly, um, all crime, or the vast majority of crime, is, is, um, it is motivated by profit, mm -hmm. and therefore financial investigations to trace and deal with those profits is fundamental. Um, and secondly, we have to, to ensure that uh, we pursue sophisticated crimes because we have to make it clear that just because crime doesn't involve violence and some people consider them to be victimless crimes, that those are also punished. So I believe that there's a significant amount of white collar crime that has to be pursued, but it has to be pursued using the very careful and very meticulous financial investigations. And sometimes these investigations that do burst open, they're not overnight. Mm -hmm. And they um, require the use of the specialized legislative um, measures that are contained in the law. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to build that expertise in using those tools. Excellent. All right. So, Gary, insofar as the course is concerned, that training course what are participants going to be exposed to? Thank you, George. The, um, the course itself has been two years in the planning. Financial investigation training has always existed in Jamaica from about the year 2000. It hasn't changed much since then, even though we've had changes in legislation, new law, etc. So we took the view that it was time to move forward with financial investigation. Hence, we planned and designed a bespoke training course for financial investigators in Jamaica. It's a two-week course. It's interactive. There are a number of modules that deal with the investigation through to prosecution of financial crimes, dealing with money laundering, the forfeiture of property, and civil recovery, which are all elements of financial investigation. Mm -hmm. Insofar as, well, technology largely aids and abets those perpetrating the fraud because that's how they manage to keep themselves under the radar and to operate undetected by the systems, meaning the people and processes that police uh, the, the perpetration of fraud within organizations. Is the course designed to offer any new technological aids to the investigators themselves to carry out their duties? Not really, George. As I say, um, the financial investigation itself follows a path, and that path is to follow the money. The person commits the crime. Mm. They then take the profit from that crime, and they do something with it, whether that is buy a property, spend it, put it in another bank account, something like that, but it will leave mm -hmm. a trail, and it's all about following the trail. People are getting more um, aware of what we look for. They try and put some layers in in relation to hiding the money. They use family members. They open bank accounts in different details, etc. But if you can find the start point from where the money moved and follow it along the line, you'll come to the right conclusion. Robin, for the for the for the, yeah, sure. Um, what I'd like to add to it, though is that. Um, the entire framework for financial investigations in Jamaica, what we're trying to do is to bring these investigators into this framework. The framework, as you may or may not be aware, also involves the financial institutions and certain non-financial institutions making re financial reports to the FID, which relate to suspicious activity. Mm -hmm. So therefore, this in intelligence um, is worked on, analyzed, and um, added to, to create these investigations packages. So sometimes it is not a question necessarily of the technology or perhaps the technology issues are dealt with by the financial institutions. So mm -hmm. there is already a gateway to critical intelligence information being provided by our financial institutions. And that's another part of the mandate of the FID to ensure that our institutions are reporting 
They are reporting through GoML, which is our um, automated software internet portal. They provide the data, which then generates good intelligence to start kick off investigations. Key question to ask then, uh, Robin, is who are the persons you've chosen to deliver the course and why did you choose them based on the, the, their professional competencies? Well, we have a, a panel of, of well-known experts, um, starting with Dr. Shazida Ali, who is Deputy Dean of the School of Law and a published author on um, money laundering mm -hmm. and, and these issues. We have Carlin Hay QC, who former prosecutor, as you know, and um, also very versed on financial crime prosecution. In addition, we have Doc, um, Mr. Sean McClary, who is from a UK company, which specializes in um, financial investigations. He is also a former police officer who has been engaged in major money laundering and tourism finance and investigations in the UK. Mm -hmm. So it's a very key, very uh, prominent panel of lecturers. So, so Gary, if I'm to give you a questionnaire for you to complete at the end of the course and ask you to sit down, how, do you, how, how is it that the skills of a, a participant in the course, mm -hmm. how those skills would have been enhanced by what the course sought to deliver, what would you write down on that paper? George, this course is different than previous courses for the following reason. Historically, people have attended a two-week course mm -hmm. or a week's course. They're fed knowledge, they go off, and they're left to their own devices yes. to try and implement that yes. knowledge. On this course, it's designed to deliver a two-week knowledge input followed by a period of 12 months when they'll be allocated a mentor who is an existing financial investigator in Jamaica, an experienced officer, They'll have to complete a personal development portfolio to show that they have applied the knowledge that they've learned in a practical way. At the end of that 12-month period, they get signed off and become what is going to be known as an accredited financial investigator. That means they're recognized mm -hmm. by law enforcement, both here in Jamaica and regionally by the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force, as a person who is competent to conduct financial investigations. Historically, as I say, George, people have attended a course. They've then gone about their normal police duties and may not have used anything. Um, the difference here is, and I'd like to commend the Commissioner of Police and um, Commissioner of Customs, the staff that they have given us to attend this course, they have agreed will work ostensibly as financial investigators going forward. That will be their day job mm -hmm. when they leave this course. Mm -hmm. So they will gather the experience and the ability to move forward and spread the use of the Proceeds of Crime Act. All right, gentlemen, that's all we have time for. I want to thank uh, Robin Sykes and uh, Gary Dixon for speaking with me. Course, Financial Investigation, Training in Financial Investigation, how to use the tools that are available to stay ahead of those who would steal billions. That's it for Let's Talk Finance. That was Let's Talk Finance, brought to you by the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service.